Ferrari wants to win again, and why not right away at the 4.361 km circuit Gilles Villeneuve in Montreal, especially since the recent victory achieved by Charles Leclerc on the streets of Monaco in Monte Carlo has significantly boosted the Marinello team's morale. The prancing horse is no longer afraid to take risks, and instead adopts an aggressive approach in every session. We clearly saw this yesterday, when despite adverse weather conditions, the two SF24 cars showed no lack of courage. Let's consider the telemetry of Charles Leclerc and Fernando Alonso in their fastest laps in the second free practice session in Montreal. Despite the challenging weather making the very track difficult to evaluate, we can derive interesting information from the telemetry data. Let's also make some preliminary observations before the analysis. Charles Leclerc achieved his fastest lap on medium tires without using the drag reduction system, setting a lap time of 1 minute 16.556, the fourth fastest time on the grid, plus 0.746 seconds behind Fernando Alonso. In wet conditions, the soft compound used by Nando is certainly more efficient due to better grip on a damp and ungrooved track. Even with the use of a harder tire, Charles Leclerc demonstrates excellent traction and rear stability when exiting the numerous chicanes on the track and the hairpin at turn 10. This can be noted primarily from the throttle data. The monogasque is always able to go full gas earlier when exiting the corner, gaining significantly in the first meters of the straights. This advantage is then lost when Fernando Alonso activates DRS and Charles Leclerc does not, losing minus 15 km per hour on the straight in the second sector and minus 27 km per hour on the last straight. As predicted, the SF24 performs excellently on the curbs, as evidenced by how Charles Leclerc tackles the final chicane. His braking input is delayed by a few meters and is overall shorter compared to Fernando's and all other drivers, analyzing all telemetry data. Nevertheless, he can accelerate at the same moment as the Spaniard. What matters in the final chicane is cutting the curbs well to get the wheels on the ground as quickly as possible, finding the necessary grip to enter the main straight. The 0.7 seconds gap is mainly found on the straights and in the first sector, where Leclerc does not optimally tackle turns one and two, losing plus zero, two seconds, mainly due to the compound used, which does not provide good grip on the dampest part of the track. He is forced to lift his foot much earlier than the braking point and sacrifice the corner entry to then find a good burst of speed exiting turn two. Throughout the rest of the lap, the Ferrari driver consistently has higher minimum cornering speeds compared to the Aston Martin driver and arrives at the exit of the hairpin with a gap of plus zero, 140 seconds. As soon as the Spaniard opens the DRS, the delta obviously increases to plus zero, 746. Another confirmation of Ferrari's agility and excellent mechanical grip can be seen from the telemetry data that show the throttle and brake usage percentages in the fastest laps of each driver. The higher the percentage of throttle usage and the lower the percentage of brake usage, the more grip the car generates in the numerous chicanes and direction changes on this stop-and-go circuit. Some other considerations, we saw a good performance by Charles Leclerc, but watch out for Red Bull, McLaren, and Mercedes. The W15 might benefit from this type of track, which lacks technical high downforce corners, potentially hiding its flaws. The numerous restarts with accelerations could favor it, noting from past telemetry and micro sectors how often its power unit, especially at low temperatures, pushes strongly in the initial stretches. Furthermore, Lewis Hamilton's lap could have been a potential pole position if not for encountering Carlos Sainz's traffic in the final chicane nullifying the two purple sectors he had set in the first and second sectors. Unfortunately, there is little to say about McLaren and Red Bull, as the two drivers from the papaya-colored team ran on medium tires at relatively high times without ever pushing, while Max Verstappen had to stay in the pits for more than half the session due to a mechanical problem with the ERS on his car. In fact, from the telemetry of previous laps, it was noticeable that the car was generating less power than expected. Considering the information included in our onboard analysis of FP2, it confirms what was said about the energy recovery strategy, where the Ferrari engineers decided to adopt the tactic used successfully in Monte Carlo again. This tactic allows spreading the peak power recovered from the two motor generators, MGUH and MGUK, during acceleration phases, with the clear objective of providing the Ferrari SF24 with a traction boost. Ferrari therefore wants to pick up where it left off two weeks ago. This time, the weather forecasts were accurate. 
Yesterday's two practice sessions were heavily influenced by Quebec's erratic weather, characterized by heavy downpours and even hail, alternating with overcast skies but no precipitation. The teams tried to maximize these brief moments during the two available hours to gather a minimal set of data as a starting point for the weekend and to understand the correct correlation with the pre-event simulations conducted at their respective factories. For Ferrari, coming off a triumph in Monaco, the Canadian round represents an opportunity to assert its role as Red Bull's main challenger. For this reason, the Marinello team would have preferred a dry weekend to confirm the progress shown with the introduction of the upgrade package brought to the Imola Grand Prix. Unfortunately, Friday did not offer this possibility. However, an interesting data point emerged on the very wet day yesterday. It can be seen in the stint carried out during FP2 by Charles Leclerc when he was on medium tires. The performance was consistent and continuously improving, partly thanks to the evolving wet track. In short, the SF24 showed a certain ease in hitting the correct operating window of the yellow-banded Pirelli tires. Nevertheless, this is an observation that will need to be confirmed over the rest of the F1 weekend. At the beginning of the second practice session, Ferrari made a small mistake, which fortunately did not lead to anything serious. The team sent the Monegasque driver out on intermediate tires when the race director had not yet declared the session wet. According to Article 30.5 of the Sporting Regulations, a driver can only use intermediate or full wet tires after the race director declares wet conditions, a procedural error from which neither Ferrari nor Charles Leclerc gained any advantage, considering it was only a practice session. The action was still noted by the race director, and at the end of FP2, the Ferrari driver was summoned by the stewards to explain the incident. The investigation concluded with a 5,000 euros fine for the Monegasque. After discussing the misinterpretation of Article 30.5 of the sporting regulations with the race director, which was Ferrari's mistake and not the Monegasque drivers, Leclerc expressed much optimism about the rest of the weekend. The victory on home turf has fueled the ambitions of the driver who grew up in the Ferrari Driver Academy. Charles confirmed that given the circumstances, there was no possibility of acquiring certain elements to analyze, as the track conditions were constantly changing each time he went out. However, the decent number of laps completed has given the Ferrari driver confidence for both qualifying and tomorrow's Canadian Grand Prix. As always, it will be about putting everything together what it matters the most, and if the weather conditions are like yesterday, it will be necessary to be reactive and find oneself in the right place at the right time. Carlos Sainz also managed to find something useful in the short time he was able to spend on the track. The Spaniard explained that despite the changing asphalt conditions, he was able to complete quite a few laps, bringing home some interesting laps both with dry and intermediate Pirelli tires.